This is Twit. I had a question related to heart bleed, and uh, I know you've talked in the past about Synology NAS boxes, which I have one. And since Heartbleed had occurred, I went ahead and updated the software on there. Good. To, to the latest and greatest. Good. But, but my concern is um, it has something called Cloud Station that is like a Dropbox mm -hmm. alternative mm -hmm. for your own cloud. Yeah. Um, with things like that and then using WebDAV of, as well to connect to files, I'm sure multiple services like that use OpenSSL. Yes. And I was just curious what you thought about, do I need to do anything else beyond what I did, or do I need to somehow deactivate those services and reactivate them to create a new certificate, or what, you know, kind of what the, what you think the plane there should be? Um, so, yes, Heartbleed did bite uh, Synology NASes. So that's a really important point. A lot of times, the reporting on Heartbleed, which was this security flaw, that allowed a bad guy and has allowed bad guys for two years to ping web servers and say, hey, give me 64K of your memory. Give me 64K of your best memory. And the server goes, goes yep, here you go. Uh, and inside there could be passwords, logins, all sorts of stuff. Uh, this is a pretty serious bug. And in fact, um, apparently the OpenVPN package on the Synology does use that OpenSSL library. Um, they are trying to patch it. Um, in fact, on the uh, I'm looking at the Synology forums, and they do have, in fact, some patch information. But they, I, you know, so DSM, which is that software, uh, uses Open SSL and it uses a vulnerable version. Um, do you have? I don't know if you need a new certificate. That's an interesting question. Um, I wonder who provides a certificate. You didn't go out and get a certificate, right? So the I, I did not. I'm assuming that it was just part of... I think it's just a Synology certificate, Yeah, I right? think so, too. So I presume when they do an update that that is one of the things that will update. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. I, I'm, I'm looking at this very long forum thread from Synology. This is a really great question because... Uh, there are people running servers that don't know it. They're running network attached storages. These are the boxes that th they're computers, but they don't look like computers. They have no keyboard, no mouse, no monitor. They just sit in your closet, but they, they're media servers, but they may also be open to the outside world as yours is, which is great. I mean, it allows you to log in and get files from anywhere and things like that, but it also means it's vulnerable. If it, if it is public facing, it's vulnerable. It's many, apparently many routers are also vulnerable. So this this is kind of a problem. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I have a um, a uh, the router that I use is uh, PF Sense, which you can just put on you know any hardware, install it. And I went through that whole process. Did they update I, it? I, they did. I, yeah. I upgraded the software, and then just to be safe for the uh, the Open VPN connection, I went ahead and just deleted the certificates in there and recreated all of that from scratch. So but I'm see, this is the kind of thing that most users are going, what? Do I have yeah. to do what? I mean, and, and almost everybody now has a router. Uh, a lot of people have NAS, and it's not just Synology. I'm, all the NAS hardware platforms, you should check. You should go back. So here's what you do. If you have anything in your house that is on the Internet, that is open to the Internet, like a router, like network-attached storage, even an operating system, although we can tell you that Macintosh and Windows are not vulnerable to this bug. But if you had anything that's serving content to the public net, you should go to the website for the manufacturer and check and hope that they've uh, fixed it. And if they have, make sure you patch it. And it isn't easy. You just heard <laughs> you just heard what James had to go through. You had to get new certificate. I mean, this is crazy stuff for a router. Um, at least yours is updatable. Most consumer-grade routers, there never is going to be an update for. We're just going to live with it. Yeah. Now, how big a problem is that? That's another question. I mean, if, you're, I, if your router is leaking 64K of memory every once in a while, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly what anybody's going to get from that. Yeah, I mean, in, in reality, I'm, you know, I'm nobody um, in terms of somebody trying to you know, if you turn off WAN administ or LAN administration, the ability to administer the router from outside, 
uh, I think that would be sufficient to protect you. What that would mean is that even if somebody did sniff your router, get your password and then log in for your router, they still would be prevented from logging in from the outside world. Yeah. I think, I think just off the top of my head, that would be sufficient. We recommend that anyway. And there's very few people need to administer their router from the outside world, you know, from down the street or from across the country. That Why would you do that? You do that from inside the house. So as long as you say nobody outside the house has access to you, I think you're probably all right. Okay. Uh, but I'm really I'm fascinated by the fact that you have to, even you had to worry about heart bleed. Yeah, it was, I mean, I guess I, you know, I probably would have been fine. It's just, it's just in a home and... But yeah, I just, but, well, do you is your is your Synology open to the public? Um, it's actually I have port forwarding on the router, so it's I'm not using the router function in the Synology itself. Um, but I wonder. I mean, if you do you use it for VPN, for instance? Um, I well, not directly. I will I will browse to it um, for files and things like that. But I use the the VPN on the router itself instead of the Synology. Wow. Yeah, so there. That's a router that's very important upgrade. Uh, yeah, it's just a fascinating situation. Um, the top ten thousand servers have, for the most part, the big ones been fixed. Point five three percent. This is as of April twenty first. I don't have anything more up to date, but uh, of the top ten thousand routers, um, I'm sorry, top one thousand uh, websites. Only 0.53% have any problem. They've been all 90% have been fixed. 99.5% have been fixed. Of the top 100,000 routers, 1.5% have not been fixed. Of the top million, as you start to get down to these smaller servers and smaller sites and so forth, 2% are vulnerable. Well, 2% of a million is, a, what is that, 20,000? That's a lot. Not yeah. in, it's not insignificant. Not insignificant. So this is being fixed, but not super fast. Um, and, you know, f the real question is, of the, f of the sites that still have Heartbleed, how many important sites, financial sites, for instance, have Heartbleed? And how many, more to the point, have told their customers to change the password? Some banks haven't said a word about it. Not a peep. Because they don't want to scare people. But you don't know. That means you don't know. Yeah. Prudent thing is to do exactly what you did, which is uh, check to see if anything that's on the public Internet, like your router or a NAS, uh, is bit. And if it is, fix it. And then uh, to change all your passwords. I mean, just everything that you want to be secure, whether you know there's a problem or not, just change them. Why not?